and our athletic director comes walking back in and he says, Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Tanner Morgan. I know I've been gone for a while, but happy 2020. I hope you guys all had a really good holiday break. Spent all the time with the friends and the family because that's what I've been doing. I'm really excited for this entire year because I'm going to be making a lot of cool new videos with basketball, outside of basketball, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy them. So I'm, I'm excited to get it going. So a lot of you guys have been messaging me on Instagram and stuff like that and YouTube that you guys want to hear about my D1 story. I haven't done it yet, so that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. Kind of going to tell you guys about my, my basketball journey, Every, everywhere it's taken me. All the things I've been through, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad. I just want to tell you guys about it so you guys can get to know me a little better and just get that story out there so that you guys can hear it and I'm sure you guys can relate to it and learn from some of the stuff that I went through. So let's get right into it. So when I was a freshman and playing basketball, I knew that I wanted to get a scholarship playing basketball at the Division One level, but I just didn't know how hard I was going to have to work and I didn't take it super serious. I was still just kind of playing for fun. Um, playing with my friends. We were all on the same team. I was just having a good time. And I played on the freshman team. I played a little bit on the JV team. And then I would sit on the varsity bench, which I thought was pretty cool being a freshman because I was sitting up there with all the older guys. So the summer after my freshman year was like the first time I played AU basketball. I'd never really even heard of it leading up to high school. And everyone, all the coaches were telling me like in order to get a scholarship, you had to play AU basketball because that's how you get the most exposure so other college coaches can come and see you play. So that's what I did. I played for an AU team from here in town. We played in a few like out of state tournaments like Washington and California, but nothing crazy. It felt pretty good to go and play at these tournaments and have college coaches from D1 schools and D2, D3, whatever, come and watch us play. But the thing I noticed the most was that the talent level at these tournaments was a lot higher than what I was used to at the high school level. I mean, these kids were athletic, they were just as big as me, um, just just as fast, if not faster. Um, so that was like the first time I was like, oh man, like this is the real deal. Like I, I enjoyed playing it because I had to compete a lot more than I did in high school. So my sophomore season, I was still at South Salem High School and I was just playing JV. And I got to play a few minutes on the varsity team. I'd get a few points, few rebounds, but nothing crazy. And I still wasn't taking basketball like super serious. Um, I, w I was good, I mean, I was one of the better players on the team, but I still wasn't taken like super serious because there wasn't like a ton of competition there, you know? After my sophomore season, going into the summer, I had a good buddy named AJ Lepre, and he went to our rival school at Sprague High School, and he had been talking to me, he wanted me to transfer over to Sprague so that we could play together. And at first I wasn't too sure because I had a bunch of friends over at South, but I knew that if I wanted to play basketball at the next level, it, that's what I needed to do because I needed someone to compete with, I needed someone to push me, and once I saw how hard AJ was working and I knew that he had the similar goal to play Division One basketball, it was kind of an eye-opener for me because I didn't have anyone around me like that that was pursuing basketball at, at that level, trying to go play Division One basketball, trying to go play professional basketball. So once I saw how hard AJ was working, I, I knew that it would be best for me if I transferred to Sprague High School to go play with him and, and work with him and have someone to compete with and push me. But a few games into my junior season, I went up for a shot in a game and I came down on someone's foot and I rolled my ankle really bad because I came down with all my weight on it. And I stood up and I thought I broke my ankle. I could feel it. It was just super unstable, wobbly. And I was like, man, I just broke my ankle. So I came out of the game. I went back to the training room with the trainer and she took my shoe off and guys my ankle was like swollen like a freaking baseball. She looked at my ankle and was like holy sh**. And so I was freaking out. And so I rehabbed my ankle. I was going to physical therapy a bunch. Luckily it wasn't broken, but the, the doctor told me that if I would have broke it, it would have been better because it heals a lot better than just tearing everything. It took me like two, three months until I was back on the court and I missed most of the season and I only played in like the last two playoff games and we ended up losing like the second or the third round. So after my junior season, going into the summer, I was finally getting healthy. My ankle was feeling better. Um, I was playing AU basketball. I was in the gym a bunch. I was in the weight room a bunch trying to get my body right because I didn't have any scholarship offers or anything like that from any school. So going into my senior season, I knew I was gonna have to work super hard that summer to try to get something because I wanted to try to get an offer that summer going into my senior year so I didn't have to stress about it a bunch. I was going to a bunch of tournaments for AU and there was a lot of college coaches there and I got a lot of interest and phone calls and letters and stuff like that in the mail from Division 1s, Division 2s, Division 3s 
and but I didn't have any real offers. So my senior season, uh, I was ready to go. I was in great shape. I, I was playing the best basketball that I had up to this point, and I was playing really good. I averaged like 17 and 10 my senior season at Sprague, which is really good numbers, but I still didn't have any real offers from any colleges. So I was stressing, and our season finished up, and I still don't have any offers, and so I was going into the AU season, and this was like my last chance to try to get an offer, guys. I was talking to a ton of schools, I had a lot of interest, but I had no legit like offers. So going into the summer, I started playing with a new AU team called I-5 Elite, and they had a coach named Combino Memory, and he is, to this day, one of the best, if not the best um, coaches, mentors um, in the game of basketball that I have had personally. So I was playing at a bunch of different AU tournaments and there was a ton of coaches. I was talking to a bunch of different schools, but I still didn't have an offer, guys. So I was at an AU tournament in Las Vegas and I get a phone call and it's a, a coach that says he's from Casper College. And I'm like, Casper College? What is Casper College? I've never heard of Casper College. I've heard of Casper the Ghost, but I've never heard of Casper College. So I started talking to him and he offers me a scholarship. And so this was like my first scholarship offer. And I was like, man, it, it felt good, but I just didn't know what Casper College was. And so I talked to him a bunch and he told me that they were a division one junior college. I didn't even really know what a junior college was. Basically a junior college, um, it's a place where players go and that just need to work on their game a little bit, maybe get their grades up, and then they go on to play Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. But the skill level at the Division One junior college is high level basketball still, guys. I mean, guys go play junior college basketball and then go on to the NBA. So that summer I had a bunch of interest. I was talking to a bunch of schools. There was a few Division Ones that wanted me to come to their school as a preferred walk-on, but I didn't want to go as a walk-on. I wanted to get a scholarship. And I knew I was good enough to get a scholarship, but maybe just not yet. So after Casper College had offered me, I went back home, I thought about it, I talked to my parents, I talked to my coaches, and it was really the best option for me um, because I knew that if I could go there and work on my game and get stronger, and then I could go on to play at the Division One level. I just needed to take a year to work on my game. So I packed my stuff up, and my dad, my brother, and I, we drove out to Casper, Wyoming. And so we get out there to Casper, Wyoming, and guys, it's a super small town. Um, the population is super low. Um, there's nothing to do out there. And I was like, man, what did I just commit to? And sorry to my subscribers that might live in Wyoming, but guys, there is nothing to do there. It's cold, it's windy, and yep, that's it. There's some animals, I guess. And so now I was in Casper, and at first I was like, did I make the wrong decision? Because I didn't take a visit to this place, guys. I just kind of, I committed to it. I looked it up online. I signed the letter, and now I was there. I, there was no going back. And so at first it was really tough for me because I was, in a, I was in a new place. It was my first time being away from home, and it was a super small town. It was freezing cold. It was windy, and it was tough for me for a few months. And so now I was starting to finally settle in in Casper, Wyoming, and I was starting to get comfortable with my surroundings. Um, I had gotten to know my teammates. Um, my coach there, Coach Russell, was a super cool guy and uh, he was really passionate about the game of basketball so he's really good to have around me. And so I was working my butt off. Um, I really wanted to start on the team and so it, it was tough because there were some older guys that had already been there that were, that were good basketball players. They were bigger than me, they were more skilled than me. So I was working super hard because I wanted to play so that other colleges could come and watch me play. And so I had a pretty good freshman year. I didn't put up any crazy numbers, but I had a pretty good freshman year. I started some games, I played a pretty good amount, and I was talking to some Division One, Division Two, um, Division Three schools, and I had some more interest, but it just felt like I was I was in high school again, you know? I had a bunch of interest, but, but no offers. So after my freshman season at Casper, I was ready to get out of there, guys. I enjoyed it for what it was. I enjoyed that I was working on my, my game of basketball. I, was, I enjoyed that I was doing well in school, but I was ready to get out of there. I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't a, a social life there. There wasn't anything to do. So I was ready to move on. I was ready to go play Division One basketball. I wanted to go somewhere, and I was just ready for that next step, but I still didn't have any real offers from any schools. And so going into my sophomore season at Casper College, it was kind of my last chance to try to get that offer, guys. And I still had my goal set of playing Division One basketball and getting my school paid for and getting that scholarship. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing Division Two, II, Division Three, but that's just not where I wanted to go. I wanted to play at the highest level. 
And so I was working super hard and going into my sophomore season, I was playing some of the best basketball I had played. The sophomore season got done and I had I had a pretty good sophomore season. Um, I put up a lot more numbers than my freshman year. And now I was talking to a lot of schools and I had interest from schools like Utah State, Portland State, um, University of Portland, um, University of Montana, Utah Valley, Bradley. So I had a lot of interest. I was talking to a lot of schools, but guys, still no offers. And so I was talking to a school, Western Illinois University, and they wanted me to come out on an official visit. So I flew out there to Macomb, Illinois, and I had an okay visit. Um, it wasn't great. Um, the coaches were super nice. They were super cool. Um, the team was cool, but it just didn't feel like the right place for me, and I also didn't play great in front of the coaches. So I left that visit with no offer, and it just didn't feel like the right place for me. And so I was back in Casper and I was talking to the University of Northern Colorado and they told me that they felt like I could go there and make an impact on the team and play a lot and that they really wanted me to be there. And so I hadn't taken a visit there yet, but I just felt like after talking to the coaches, like they really wanted me to be there. So they offered me a scholarship. So this was my first division one scholarship offer. And I was super hyped guys. Like I, I felt like all my hard work was finally paying off. Um, and I had got that offer that I had always wanted. I committed to the University of Northern Colorado and then I took my visit and I went on my visit and I had a great time. I got along with the team really well. I, I really enjoyed the coaches, the campus. And so I signed to the University of Northern Colorado. And so now I, it was time to get to work and I wanted to start on the team really bad. So I was working super hard. I wanted to make an impact on the team. I wanted to win a lot of games. My first division one game guys was at Kansas and so we played at Kansas first game of the season and it was a sold-out game 19,000 people in the stands I was super nervous but I was super excited at the same time because there's just so much history in that gym and so I had a pretty good first game I had eight points five rebounds it was just super exciting to to be in that atmosphere and playing at the division one level so after my season got done my junior year my first year at unc it went okay i mean we only won like nine games we went like nine and 25. i played pretty good i started about half the games i put up okay numbers um, i set the school record for the most rebounds in a game with 18 rebounds against northern arizona which is pretty cool because i still hold that record today the season was over and we we're going into the summer season um, we still had workouts and weights and conditioning and stuff like that so we were in a team meeting all of our coaches were there um, our whole team was there and um, we're just kind of going over the plan for like the next week we're sitting there and our athletic director comes walking in he says something to our head coach and then they all go walking out of the room so me and all my teammates are like what the heck is going on and so they go out there they're out there for like two minutes maybe and our athletic director comes walking back in and he says as of right now, the entire coaching staff has been fired. And we're like, like, what do you mean they've been fired? Like they were just right here talking to us, like fired, fired for what? And he's like, I can't go into the details of what's happening, but as of right now, they're, they're fired, they're let go. You guys can't have any contact with them. So what ended up happening was our entire coaching staff at UNC had violated a bunch of NCA rules um, from 2010 to 2014, so before I had even gotten to UNC, they were taking classes for players so that they could pass their classes. They were writing papers, doing homework, stuff like that. So now I was looking for a school to transfer to because I didn't know what to do because I didn't know what kind of punishment there was gonna be on UNC for all these violations. Um, I didn't know who the new coaching staff was gonna be. And so I started looking around. So UNC brought in a new coach um, named Jeff Linder. He was from Boise State. And so I got to talk to him and get to know him. I was still kind of unsure if I was gonna transfer or not, but after talking to him a little bit, I, I felt like I could stay and play for Coach Linder and things would work out. And so I wanted to stay there with my teammates. I didn't want to abandon them, but I was unsure of how things were going to go. So I ended up staying at UNC. And so going into my senior season, we had a whole new coaching staff. Um, most of the players stayed there, a couple transferred, but I went in and I talked to Coach Linder in his office and he gave me the option to redshirt and sit out a year because we weren't going to be able to play in the postseason tournament. And I wanted to win a championship. I wanted to go play in the NCAA tournament. So after thinking about it, I, was, I wasn't sure if I wanted to sit out and redshirt for a year because that meant another year of school, which I wasn't super fond of. So I redshirted my senior season at UNC and I just took the year to get healthy, get my body right because I was still pretty beat up for my junior season. So I was just in the gym a bunch working out. Um, I practiced with the team, but I didn't travel and go to games with the team for the most part. 
and I, I focused on school and I focused on my body and getting better at basketball to get ready for my final season at UNC. And I, I graduated that year, my redshirt year, and so I got my degree, and, which was awesome. And so going into my final season at UNC, I was in the best shape of my life. I was playing the best basketball, and we got to take a team trip to the Virgin Islands. And so we went over there to play a couple games and have a little bit of vacation. But while I was over there, we came back and I got super sick and I ended up losing like 20 pounds. I was in the hospital twice. It, it was tough because I had just worked so hard to get in really good shape and now I was super sick and I lost a bunch of weight. So I had to work super hard to gain that weight back, which was just kind of a minor setback, but it was tough because it was like the sickest I've ever been in my life. I had to lay in my bed for like a whole week. I got healthy again and going into my senior season, we were playing really well. I mean, we had really good team chemistry. Our new coaching staff was a lot more positive and we were winning a ton of games. I started 38 out of 38 games that year and I was putting up the highest numbers I had my whole college career. So everything was just going really good. My body was feeling good, I was playing good and we were going into our conference tournament, the Big Sky Tournament, feeling good, playing really good basketball. And so we won our first two games of the tournament by like 20 points, we were playing really well. and. But now we were going up against Montana, who was the best team in the conference. It was a really close game. We, we battled back and forth the entire game and ended up going into overtime. And we ended up losing overtime by like four points. And so now um, I was in the locker room and I thought I had just played my last college basketball game ever. And I was super sad. It just wasn't how I wanted to end my college basketball career. I wanted to win a championship. I wanted to get a ring. I wanted to hang a banner at UNC. And we had just lost in overtime to to a really good team, but we felt like we could win. And so now it was the next morning after our tough loss to Montana, and we we're all pretty emotional and pretty bummed still. And our coach told us that we were gonna play in a postseason tournament, the College Insider Tournament, the CIT, and we didn't wanna play. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, we didn't wanna play because we had just lost a tough game, and we didn't wanna play in a tournament just to maybe lose again. And so our coach put us in this tournament, and so we kinda of rallied as a team after this tough loss. Our first game was against Drake, and I had the best game of my career. I put up a career high in points. Um, I just played really well, and it just felt really good to get that win after a tough loss the, the game before. Then we went and won our next two games, and now we were playing in the championship for the CIT tournament. We had a packed crowd. I mean, it was a sold out game. We set the record for the highest attendance, and it was a really good game, and we ended up winning by like four points and the entire crowd rushed the court and my dad was there. He came running on the court and I hugged him and I just started to cry because I was just so excited that I had won a championship. And a week before that, I, I thought I had just played my last college basketball game and now here I was winning a championship still. And so it was just a super good feeling. I mean, me and my teammates were super happy. I mean, all of our, our classmates and our teachers and our, our friends and our, the whole community at UNC came running on the court. It was just a great feeling. It was a great way for me to end my college basketball career. My senior season ended on a super high note. We set a bunch of records, the highest attendance for a game, most wins, the first time a Big Sky school had won the CIT tournament. It was just a great finish to my senior season. Although we didn't win the Big Sky tournament, which was still super disappointing, we set a lot of records. We did something that no other team at UNC had done before, no team in the Big Sky had done before. So now that I had just played my last college basketball game, I needed to figure out what was gonna be next. So I took some time off, you know, just the season was over, I was tired, everyone kind of took some time off just to rest, relax, enjoy our win, and I started thinking about what was next for me. And I was just tired, I was, I was worn out, it was a long season, um, we played 38 games, and we just ended on a really high note. And so I thought about it a lot, and I didn't know if I wanted to go play professionally overseas, or what I wanted to do now that I was done. And so now I was meeting with my coaches and they were trying to help me figure out what was next for me in basketball. And they were trying to help me figure out if I needed to get an agent or put together some highlight film to send out to teams and to agents and stuff like that. So after talking to my coaches and my family and just thinking about it a lot, um, I decided that I didn't want to go overseas and pursue a professional career. I was just kind of burnt out. I had a long season, and although I, I loved everything about my college career and basketball, and I had the potential to go play professionally and make money, I just, I felt like I ended on a high note, and I was ready for a new chapter in my life, and I wanted to try something new. I've been playing basketball my entire life since I could remember, and so I moved back to Oregon, and I just took some time off to think about it a lot, and I started to miss it, guys. I mean, I knew that I didn't want to go play professionally overseas. I just didn't want to have that kind of commitment again, 
and I wanted to do something new. Although I didn't want to go play professional basketball overseas, I, I just have such a love for basketball because you meet so many great people and um, I met a ton of lifelong friends through basketball and so I, I still wanted to be involved in the basketball community so I just love that I can make basketball videos now and make a career off of it. And so I just want to say thank you to all of you guys for allowing me to continue to play basketball and have fun and make these videos and just be able to do something that I love even though I'm not going to play professional basketball I'm still able to play basketball and enjoy it and have fun and make these videos for you guys so thank you so much because I can't do this without you guys if you guys like these videos make sure you hit like if you guys want to see more make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you next time